2020 presidential candidate and uh, I'm running with the Purple Party which is to transcendence of the divisive nature of politics. Chris, I was curious, don't you find it more offensive that Greta was proposing that she's not interested in anyone's hope. She would like us to believe in the delusion that our houses are literally on fire. Don't you find that's more offensive to be spreading a message of having zero hope and encouraging people to be in a panic than what one other person said? Don't you think it's a disservice that we're putting all this focus on something that's offensive? Then uh, the solutions for climate change are talking about that. And I just want to state that this is the reason why people don't pay more attention to politics because I have no hate for a single person on any side and I have respect for however people feel and I have respect for anyone that's voting for Trump. I'm just curious. Do you have respect for people that vote for Trump and the fact that they like him and believe in him and they're excited to vote for him? Look, two things. Thank you. Absolutely. I respect people who voted for Trump. I love y'all. I look and I still believe in a place called hope to vote Bill Clinton. I named my daughter hope. Hope is my favorite word. It is. And I have hope that whatever we're going through in this country right now gets worked out. And we're all singing kumbaya, even Mike and I. <laughs> I agree. I can't believe I have to say I agree with Chris Hahn, but I do. <laughs> there you go. We should drop the mic there. <laughs> Last question. All right, Mr. Knowles, this is my question for you. Uh, I would like to ask why Republicans and conservatives don't talk about the energy, and that why there are wind and solar, and now there's also gas. But however, the collection of those energies, however, you can build a car engine and destroy it easily. However, a, a battery, a car battery, takes way more energy to make than an engine. And also, it's non-biodegradable, and also wind turbine blades are also non-biodegradable. They take 100 years for them to biodegrade, so they just bury them into the ground. It's a great point you raise. And uh, we un unfortunately, we didn't have time to get into too much in the way of energy and some solutions to protecting the environment. But of course, these questions are very important. What energies are the most efficient? What are stored in a way that won't cause more harm to the environment than the good that they will do? All of this is a cause for some political humility. You know, this is the topic of this debate is, is our political rhetoric too extreme? And the answer, of course, is yes and no. It is too extremely stupid, but it's not extremely clear enough. It's not extremely humble enough. And that's something that we should all do when we're approaching any question, from climate change to immigration to any other issue. We should fundamentally approach it by acknowledging the complexity of that issue and not writing off half the country as being science deniers or deplorable and irredeemable. Because I don't think that's true of, of half of my countrymen, and I hope that the left doesn't feel that way about us. I really think that the rhetoric in this country has to change, and I do want more intelligent debates. I want more debates like this. I mean, we disagree, we yelled at each other a little bit, but you know, it's a little entertainment, right? It's gotta be, you gotta keep you watching. I mean, people are leaving when you're starting to quote these studies. But it, it is a, it's, the rhetoric in this country is not allowing us to really debate solutions. And we on the first day, I where we find real solutions, because this world is changing fast, and we are starting to see other countries compete with us in ways they never have before. And unless we're willing to get serious about facing these challenges, both at home and abroad, and talk about them collectively as a nation without pointing at the other person and saying, no, you are evil, you are wrong, we're not going to get anything done. So I hope to God we can have more things like Politicon, where people from the left and the right, although mostly the right in this room, all come together and just kind of work it out, hug it out, talk it out, move forward. It's the best we could do. Thank you for staying. Thank you. I'm not going to give you a hug, but I'll give you a handshake. Michael Knowles and Chris Hahn, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks. So, there it is. We had seven parts of this debate that we put together. And the last three, I think five, six, and seven were question and answers or whatever. Um, overall, I would say that in the early parts of the debate, Michael Knowles clearly uh, had the facts, the figures to him. Chris Hahn was just bloviating rhetoric, narrative, those kind of things, just as you would expect. Any time that Michael was making some type of a point, then you had the interjection of the moderator, you know, Clay Aiken, who is clearly a Democrat, clearly on the left, clearly a liberal, and 
wanted to interject himself into the comments, into the questions, you know, taking sometimes a minute, minute and a half, two minutes to formulate a question, and at times got very testy, used drop the F bomb, you know, several several you know, several times, uh, audience getting under his skin. And you know when someone starts to do that, that they realize that they don't have any there's nothing behind what they're saying. So in order to try to deflect and get that anger out, it turns into using, you know, swear words. And it definitely was not professional at all. Very unprofessional if you're talking about, you know, being a serious moderator whose job is to basically control the debate, control the commentary, make sure everybody gets equal say and ask the pertinent questions and then get the hell out of the way, basically. So all in all, it was a good debate, I thought, between the two. They got their chance to put their points out. I think Michael Knowles had more of the facts and figures. Um, obviously, in the crowd was, I think, definitely on Michael's side more than Chris Hans. But that's the way that it was. So we appreciate you taking time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Check out our other videos on our uh, YouTube homepage and the links as well. My final thought as always, when you're right, you're right. When you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe. Karen, I just want to go the loose perm in my hair so it will and I don't have to set thoda sa curly ho jayenge do you know how much is have to take do you know how to take care of the perm you know how to take care of the skin you mujhe sikha rahi hai you know mom what is the perm is no inko pata hi nahi hai what is the perm is do you know mom your hair will come out curly ओ रेली ये ट्वेंटी ईयर है इनको पता ही नहीं है इनके पैदा होने से पहले बालों की क्या टेक केयर करते